everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. My name is Yasmin Razak, and you are, are listening to another great wealth building webinar from Ebere Okoye. Uh, each month, we interview one of Ebere's clients or joint venture partners to find out how they build wealth through their businesses and through real estate investing. So hopefully, you can um, gain some knowledge from that. And it's my pleasure today to introduce Eric Johnson. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, Eric, I'll do just a very brief intro and then we can get straight into it. Now, Eric has worked as a computer scientist for the Department of Defense since 1997. And after re reading Carlton Sheets No Money Down program back in 2013, he became interested in real estate investing and so started to look at various online sources such as biggerpockets.com and CREonline.com. Um, after learning a little bit about investing, he decided to join a Baltimore REA and he um, attended a seminar entitled Wholesaling for Quick Cash given by the famous Captain Pete. Those of us in investing know Captain Pete very well. And he decided that wholesaling was the best and least risky path to get started in real estate investing. Um, he started wholesaling, but then he became more comfortable talking to motivated sellers on the phone and really got serious last year. And now um, Eric still works for the DOD and, but has a handful of deals. And his goal is to become a full-time real estate investor, as it is for many of us. So thanks again for joining us, Eric. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about how you actually got started in real estate investing? Yeah. Yeah. So as, as you mentioned in the bio, um, I pretty much always had an interest in actually owning a, a physical asset, you know, like a, like a piece of property. And um, so I would... Uh, uh, frequently mentioned that to uh, a young lady who I was dating at the time a couple of years ago and it turns out that she uh, had thought about getting into real estate herself but she never really pursued it aggressively and so I would always see these real estate books in her basement and so one day we had a conversation and she just decided to um, you know to give me the, the real estate books and told me to take them home and just read them and, and see if I might um, might decide to actually, you know, get my feet wet in, in real estate investing. And so the first book I read, it actually wasn't a book, it was a binder, you know, um, it was the uh, the book by Carlton Sheets, for No Money Down Investing. And it, it piqued my interest. I, I read the book in about a week. It piqued my interest, and I just started looking online for, uh, you know, further information on real estate investing. As you mentioned, I came across Bigger Pockets and also CRE, which stands for Creative Real Estate uh, online and I just I be I became engrossed in it and so um you know I joined the uh, area group Baltimore Rhea and I I started wholesaling after I uh, took Captain Pete's uh, class you know it, it just seemed like a, a uh, uh, the most prudent way of really getting your feet wet in real estate investing without actually risking a lot of money yep, so to this date I've, I've done maybe I've done five deals you know, since last year, um, I really got serious about wholesaling, and I'm, I'm actually looking to uh, to buy rental property this year. So, okay, well, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the first time you closed on a deal, how what that involved, and how that felt to you know hold that check in your hand, or to know that you'd actually accomplished something. Right. Yeah. So once I decided to uh, to start writing these yellow letters, as everybody I'm sure uh, is familiar with. Um, you know, so I, I wrote the letters, I sent out the letters one weekend, I sent out, I think, maybe 50 to 100. Yeah, I think it was more to 100. And I just sent the letters out, and I was on my way back from New York from taking my girlfriend to a, uh, to a class that she had to take out one weekend. And a, a young lady called me. Um, she was from New Jersey, and she said, Eric, you know, I, I, um, my family members received your letter in the mail, and we are looking to sell our mother's house. Uh, she lives in Park Heights, you know. So that was my that was my first time receiving a phone call from a, from a uh, potential motivated seller. So um, you know, uh, understandably, I was I was very nervous, you know, because I wasn't sure how to handle the call. So I immediately told her that I would uh, give her a call back tomorrow, the next day, <laughs> because I was nervous. And so um, I gave her a call back the next day, and it turns out that. 
her parents had lived in Park Heights for a number of years, and it really became, you know, a, a concern for them because of the of the uh, of the crime in the area. And so they wanted to get rid of their parents' house as quickly as possible. And I told them that I could assist them. And um, I told them basically, I was upfront with them. I said that I wouldn't buy the house myself; that I would actually look to pass on the house to someone else. And so she was somewhat reluctant because it was unconventional to her. And so, to make a long story short, uh, they tried to sell the house themselves, but they wasn't able to, so they called me back. Um, we put the house on the contract. Uh, I actually didn't have any buyers, so I decided to put out some bandit signs with the information regarding the deal. And I got a call in about two days after putting out those bandit signs, and a, a lady told me that she thought that she might have an investor uh, interested in the property. And again, uh, long story short, uh, we ended up, I ended up selling the property uh, about two weeks later after getting the property in the contract, and I, it was sweet. I mean, I, re I really became a believer because, you know, initially I didn't think that, um, you know, folks would actually call me. You know, I, I heard all these stories and read all these stories about folks, you know, sending out these yellow letters and folks calling them, and they, and they are, you know, uh, were able to get these really, um, you know, large, uh, large profits on these, on these, on these properties, and and I just didn't believe it until it actually happened to me, and I, I was just elated, you know, and so I really became aggressive about, you know, marketing, you know, uh, to potential motivated sellers, you know, so it was great. It was okay, great. good. It's it's a good feeling to yeah. to make that first deal. Absolutely. Would you care to share with us um, how much you made either on that deal or any other deal that you're really proud of? Yeah, well, I made fifteen hundred dollars. I made fifteen hundred dollars. Um, you know, like I said, the only really laborious work that I that I did for that particular deal was just putting out the bandit signs. And I think I put out maybe five or six. You know, um, it took me about an hour to put those bandit signs out, and 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 they did all the work for me. You know, and wow, that's not a bad payday. Fifteen hundred dollars yeah, for yeah. a couple of hours working some bandit signs. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Great, That's know, great. It's nice to hear those kinds of stories. Yeah. Um, even though fifteen hundred dollars to some people, they may think, "Oh, is that it?" But then they realize, "Oh my gosh, that didn't take him long at all." So that yeah. was fantastic. That's really good to hear that. Now, um, since then, obviously, you've done other deals. Were there any challenges that you had to face along the way? Yeah, and actually, um, so right now, I'm working on closing a deal, um, and it's been challenging because the the actual owner lives in Nigeria. Um, okay. His, bro his brother lives here, but you know his brother is not on the deed. It's you know um, uh, the brother lives here in the state is not on the deed. His brother is back in Nigeria, is the one who actually owns the property. So we have uh, been having some issues with the power of attorney. Um, the buyer, my end buyer's uh, attorney, did not like the language in the power of attorney. So we had to devise another one. We had to uh, email it back to the uh, brother in Nigeria. He had to uh, make an appointment at the embassy in Nigeria to get it uh, to get it notarized. Um, and it's so it's been a it's it's been a it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge. Um, but uh, we should be closing on that one uh, next week. You know. Okay, so, uh, that's great. Your yeah. first transatlantic deal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've okay. Um, how how did you come across Ibera and her team, and how have they helped you along the way, either with taxes or financial advice? What's that been like? Yeah, so I came across Ibera um, from asking folks uh, via the Real Deal Meetup Network, just asking for any recommendations for a good CPA who is, uh, you know, as we always say, investor friendly, who is familiar with real estate investing, and. I think I got back four or five recommendations, and they were all for a very, you know. So <laughs> I decided to give her a call, and you know, it 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 um it, it really helps that you know she herself is an investor, you know, so she really understands real estate investing. Along with um, you know, I found out you know that she's she uh, was a, a student of Al Aiello. Um, I think he. Uh, he has a program called the the LLC machine or something like that. But it, it but apparently, um, um, you know, uh, this guy is very good at developing uh, LLCs to the point where um, it really benefits the investor. And so, to find out that you know she was uh, was familiar with 
um, those tactics and, and those um, procedures that, you know, this guy Al Aiello uses. Um, you know, and, and, and the fact that she, you know, from talking with her, she seems very savvy and very um, intelligent as a CPA. Um, it just seemed like a good fit for me, you know. And I was actually doing my, uh, my own taxes uh, myself. And the year that I first uh, met Barry, um, I had just finished my taxes, so I gave her my, I gave her my taxes, and I actually uh, uh, owed money. But uh, when she redid the taxes, um, you know, she actually was able to uh, get me money back. So okay, uh, well, that's it, great. It, made, it just made sense to me that you know, um, her, you know, her and her team were were the uh, were the uh, ones that I should be. Uh, you know, utilizing for my uh, for my taxes. Okay, and so as we wrap up this call, Eric, can you um, impart any advice to any listeners that are perhaps thinking about getting into investing but are a bit nervous or scared? What would you say to them? Yeah, I, w I would definitely say you you definitely have to be consistent and persistent. Um, if if it's something that you really want to pursue. Um, you know, I understand that you, you, you know, folks may be afraid or scared in the beginning, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge that you have to overcome. Otherwise, you know, you will never take action and you will find yourself in a state of inertia, you know. So, um, you know, you definitely have to take action, but, but, but at first you have to educate yourself. You have to become familiar with um, real estate investing and you have to decide which exit strategy you're going to use or which which um, real estate investing endeavor you're going to pursue and educate yourself about it and, and then take action, you know, take massive action. And that okay. action has to be consistent. You have to be consistent and persistent. And everything is about marketing. You have to market. You have to market. So. <laughs> consistent and persistent. That's a good, that's a good thing. Okay, so you say you're, you're what, what, what's in the future for Eric what, with real estate investing? What's your next deal? Well, I'm I'm looking to to um to obtain some buy and holds. I'm looking to uh, to buy some rental properties this year. Um, as I as you mentioned earlier, I've I've been working for a DLD for the last 17 years. You know, so um it, it pays well, and and I'm not a very um uh, extravagant spender. You know, so I'm very uh, financially astute, and so um you know I have some capital saved, and so I'm just looking to uh to um to increase my net worth by 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 using real estate investing, you know, primarily uh, rental properties, you know, but I like okay. I like the wholesaling because it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of sexy, you know, to be able to <laughs> get a property on the contract with just a piece of paper and and sell it to so to an end buyer for a, a large check, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, well, so that's that, great. That, now, are you looking to um, either joint venture with anybody or looking for people to bring you deals? If so, um, share some information on how people can get in touch with you. Yeah, yeah. So I have a website. Uh, it's Amon Ra, A M as in Mary, E N as in Nancy, Ara, A Properties dot com. Uh, my number is four four three four seven five. 0905. Uh, I'm always looking to um, to joint venture and, and to meet and network with uh, new people. Um, and I'm also looking for rental properties in, in the uh, Baltimore City area, you know, uh, 123906 and, and 13 zip codes. You know, if anybody out there is, uh, have any deals in those particular areas, yeah, so, yep. Okay, great. So for people listening, all that information is on the screen. Um, so get in touch with Eric and see if you guys can't make some serious money together. Thank you so much, Eric, um, and we wish you the best of luck in your ventures. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Sure. Bye-bye.